this exploration of the digital paradigm, we will follow more the traditional, well, the traditional also innovation theory, just because it's sometimes very confusing to think about deep learning neural nets transform it's for this like, that can be quite confusing uh, to thinking about thinking about data and thinking about knowledge so it's sometimes easier to think about more traditional technology and the fundamentals of innovation theory of technological progress and societal change they still stay the same so understanding them and having a thorough understanding of innovation theory will help us to navigate the digital age a lot better because, well, history never repeats itself, but it rhymes. So that's why it's uh, important to, to study these concepts and, and the nature of technological revolution. So, okay, so if we go back to million years, <laughs> to, to, to the Stone Age, we can see there has been some progress, right? There has been some progress even in the last few hundred years. I mean, this brain didn't, didn't develop a lot over the last 200 years, but we would think ourselves more advanced than, for example, 200, 300, 400 years when, when our current countries um, were founded. And that goes all the way back. We can distinguish three big technological paradigms. In the first one, we started to learn how to dominate matter. That goes back to the Stone Age, the Homo habilis, when we started to distinguish ourselves from Know, the rest of, of the animals, because we started to use tools. The Homo habilis, the handyman, started to, to use tools. And then the Bronze Age, the Iron Age, and we started with that to work the land. So then we explored countries, and it was very important to, to own land and, and, and to work matter. So, so that was the first period, and that went for a very long time. Then came a period where we started to transform, learn how to transform energy. Well, first with the fire, the fire was a precursor. So we started that for a long time. So these waves, they actually start very slowly. And then came water with the mills, for example. Also then with ships, then steam was very important, electricity, and then the combustion engine. And, and you know, we are still dealing with some of the outfalls of that revolution hundreds of years later. And now the third one, is we're learning how to transform information. So from transforming matter, energy, and information. And that is very cool. And also the information paradigm, we are already in the second technological long wave. These are called Schumpeterian long waves, and we will get into these. The first was we learn how to dominate uh, or understand to process data in communication. That's how it started with good old telephony, with telecommunication. And now the currently dominating paradigm has to do with knowledge and with algorithm, with artificial intelligence, with programming, and we will talk much more about that. That doesn't mean that each one of them is completely rolled out. They're also diffusing through society at different speeds and inevitably create divides and inequalities. But again, I'm getting ahead of myself. What I wanted to show here is that the digital paradigm is so transversely applicable that it even steals a little bit the thunder of some of the previous paradigms. So it means this here, um, in the transformation of knowledge, these are accumulative. So, okay, I, I show you one example. Let's take the example here of steam. I mean, it still creates, that, that created companies well, that explored in, in the United States, the, the Wild West connected the countries that are still, if you look at the largest transportation companies by market cap, yeah, the most of the top five are still uh, railway companies. I mean, that is very valuable to have all these, you know, railway tracks uh, across the country. That's how this country here was, was connected uh, and explored. And you can see here in the top five, four of them are still the ones who have this very valuable capital of of railway tracks. One of them is United Parcel Service. That also goes like, you know, that's over a hundred years back, which is very important also with the car. But check out who's on rank number six. There is a company that launched in 2011 and it snuck up on everybody else and is, is sneaking up there and is all over the world already. And actually this company is a transportation company that technically I don't think owns one transportation device. <laughs> it doesn't really, you know, own a car in, in that sense. It just, yeah, what does it own? It owns information and knowledge about the transportation sector. And with that, it kind of like 
leapfrogged. It leapfrogged from basically the steam age all the way to the knowledge and, and the algorithm age. 